and uh, answer a question that many people, uh, I don't know, when I grew up, I learned that at the time of Columbus, everybody thought the world was flat and, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, the fact is that uh, anybody with any uh, scholarly pretensions or even any practical navigation experience knew very well that the world wasn't flat. But um, it's, 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 hard, it's a hard thing to realize that when you're standing on the world, standing on a beach. And this is a, 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 a little from a cosmography, 1524, that attempts to explain to people, uh, to give them one proof for the rotundity of the world. And what, what he's, in effect, saying here is, uh, here's, the, here's the moon, uh, here's the earth, and here's the sun. If the earth were a, what, a tetrahedron or something like that, the shadow that the sun uh, cast on the moon would be this shape. If the earth were pyramidal, the shadow would be this shape. If the earth were a cube, you'd get a shadow like that. But in fact, the earth is round, and so you get a shadow like that. Uh, so it's it's not uh, it's not um, certainly not uh, not the case that everybody knew the world was round, but it was it was well known. And in fact, as long ago as 200 B.C., a fellow named Eratosthenes was able to actually measure to come up with a pretty good estimate of the the actual circumference of the Earth. And this is the way he did that. This is uh, Egypt, and he understood he knew that in Syene, a place. Uh, which is actually very close to the Aswan Dam, uh, there was a well. And on uh, a certain day of the year, the sun was said to be directly above that well. And you knew that because if you looked down this very deep well in the desert, you could see the reflection of the sun. So he did an experiment uh, by, he lived, uh, uh, Eratosthenes lived in Alexandria, and he did an experiment in which on the same day that that well was supposed to be illuminated in that way, he measured the angle uh, of the shadow cast by a pole, a perpendicular pole in Alexandria. And through some fairly elementary mathematics, he assumed, he assumed that, in fact, uh, they were more or less on, on a north-south line. And, in fact, they are more or less on a north-south line. And so he did this experiment. Here's a, here's a side view of what he did. Here's the well. Actually, this is graduated in miles. It's about 480 miles. And here in Alexandria, when the sun is, the sun's rays, of course, are absolutely parallel because the sun is so far away and the earth is so small by comparison. So when the sun's rays penetrated to the bottom of the well in Syene, they cast a shadow this big in Alexandria. And the the geometry of it is pretty simple. Um, you measure, if you measure the angle cast by the shadow, it's the same as this angle here, uh, this sector of the Earth. And he calculated that that was 7.2 degrees, or a 50th of a circle. So if you take, uh, it was, he reckoned the distance as 5,000 stadia. Um, if you take, uh, 5,000 stadia and multiply it by 50, you get uh, you get a figure which translated into miles is about 24,860 or 24,000 miles, and the actual figure is 24,860. So he's he's off by nine percent, but I think you know a pretty reasonable calculation considering the instrumentation he had available.